A woman wakes up stuck in this. How does she get there? The story you haven't heard. Time running out on Mount Hood. We wish the rescue workers got speed. Where searchers fear they may have ended up. It's beginning to look and feel a lot like Christmas. How much slower will the temperatures go? Now on the Fox 11, 10 o'clock news. Good evening, I'm Christine Devine. And I'm John Beard. It's not officially winter, but it sure feels like it. We're getting a powerful blast of cold weather with temperatures in the teens in some places. Ed Lance goes to live in Sherman Oaks to show us how people are coping with the cold. Ed. And John, they're doing just about anything they can to try to keep this chill off. Around the come on, let's take a walk. This is one of the many Christmas tree lots right through the area, through the valley tonight. Folks out here, these are the guys hard hit. They've got to work in this cold. You bet they're drinking something warm because you bet they're feeling the chill. Downtown LA to the valley, they're all bundled up. It's starting to look a lot like Christmas, and it sure feels like it too. <sighs> cold, huh? No, oh, it's definitely very cold tonight. It's just this, is the, this and the customers is the only way we're definitely keeping warm tonight. The customers here at Tina's Trees, where it's a, a week in counting, and you know what? It's not too cold for them. It's very cold, but it's good for the trees and uh, brings people out and. The weather's brisk and so are sales. So it really makes everybody feel like it's Christmas time, It huh? does feel like it's Christmas. But there is no Christmas cheer if you're stuck out here. On the streets, homeless, where it's cold. Just imagine. It's hard. Ooh, it's hard. And he knows he's one of the hundreds who's lucky enough to spend the night inside on the cots, under the blankets. Thank goodness. Uh, thank God for the shelter. You know, this shelter houses hundreds of people that would be out there with no blankets, uh, hurting. This is the new Image Emergency Shelter, South L.A., where they come in from Skid Row and just about everywhere else. Hot meals, because when it's this cold, they're packed. This shelter generally holds 400 people and we've been seeing approximately 460 to 470 people a night because they don't really have a choice Ooh, it's cold it's, it's cold life mm -hmm. that's not it's not meant for human consumption it's not mm -hmm. And now live, when you talk about that shelter, hundreds in there tonight, but you know what? They've had to turn away a few hundred more, just no room. It's that packed inside there. Big question on the streets all over tonight. Is this cold blast going to lead right up to Christmas? I have no idea, but I know Maria Kuban's tracking this, this winter blast force in the weather center. Maria. All I have to say is that it will indeed be very cold over the next couple of mornings. In fact, we're talking about some frost advisories and freeze warnings in effect, and I think it will continue to be relatively cold through the rest of the year in into uh, January. We're looking at that storm system that brought us the rain and certainly the cold temperatures. This system right here, you can see the counterclockwise circulation drop down from the uh, Gulf of Alaska and it brought in all of that cold air and the wake of it behind the system. We're looking at clear skies and cold winds. 53 right now in Santa Monica, not bad. 48 in Van Nuys, 45 in Fullerton. And as I mentioned, that frost advisory in effect, temperatures getting down to 28 to 32 degrees. I'll talk more about the advisories and freeze warnings coming up a little bit later in weather. John. All right, see you then. Thanks, Maria. Carson Sheriff's deputies are looking for a baby abducted from foster care by his biological parents. Around noon, five-month-old Cole Rabales was having a supervised visit with his biological father and mother when they ran off with the baby. 38-year-old William Rowe and 37-year-old Tashna Rabales are considered a danger to the child. They're reportedly driving a 1990 Plymouth Voyager, license number 5WIR. 742. In Lancaster, police are investigating the deaths of two people. Their bodies were found around 3 o'clock this afternoon in a home on Price Lane. Jane Momoto is live with the latest on the investigation. Jane. Well, Christine, right now a murder mystery unraveling here in Lancaster. Homicide detectives are on scene right now trying to piece together what happened inside this two-story home. It is located in the 45,000 block of Price Lane. Neighbors are telling us that sheriff's deputies were actually called out here this afternoon on a report of a missing person. Lancaster residents who live in this upscale neighborhood say they saw lots of expensive cars parked in the driveway of this house, but rarely would see the residents who live here. They say a mother and her 18-year-old daughter were reported missing a few weeks ago by the dad, who lives in South Carolina. Late this afternoon, one of the neighbors watched as sheriff's detectives, armed with house keys, went inside to check on the mother and daughter. Detectives reportedly found the bodies in a bedroom shot to death. 
I just moved from L.A. to get out of the Baldwin area to get away from the killing and the violence, and I moved here six weeks, and, you know, this is unfortunate. It's all around us. <laughs> And sheriff's detectives have just confirmed with us they have found the bodies of two women. However, now they are saying they do not know the relationship, whether that is a mother and daughter, and they are not confirming if they were shot. Also, we have just learned that uh, they don't know the length of the duration of how long the bodies have been out here. They're saying the bodies may not have been out here for several weeks, but as more information becomes available, we'll update you. Live in Lancaster, I'm Jane Yamamoto, Fox 11 News. Sad day in Oregon's Mount Hood. The body of one of those three missing climbers was brought down today from the mountain. Search teams will keep looking for the others, but optimism is fading. William Lajeunesse has the latest. Kelly James is off the mountain. Rescuers in Oregon have found the body of Kelly James. He was one of the three Oregon climbers missing for more than a week on Mount Hood. His frozen body was found in an ice cave about 300 feet below the summit. It was Kelly's cell phone call on December 10th that started rescue efforts. Family members say a piece of jewelry described to them by rescuers was Kelly's. They identified a ring with my brother's initials on it, which has led me and our family to conclude uh, that the climber found in the cave yesterday was, was my brother. <laughs> My brother Kelly. A second snow cave was found nearby, but it was empty. It's believed the two other climbers, Ryan Hall and Nico Cook, took off towards the north side of the mountain, an extremely dangerous area known as the gullies. The area is prone to avalanches and has some 200 foot drops in some areas. That was the last low, known location of, of two of the climbers, uh, right above uh, one of the most, I mean, Historically, we've had a lot of problems in it, this area if there's in the event of a fall. Now, two more families wait for word of their loved ones hanging out to faith yep, and each go. other. Kelly, Brian, and Nico shared a passion and reverence for climbing, and the bond for, forged between them will last throughout eternity. We hold out hope to the, today for Brian and Nico's safe return. The body of Kelly James was brought off the mountain today by helicopter. They have confirmed that he had a broken arm. The search continues tomorrow. They'll use avalanche poles, also listening devices potentially, and metal detectors looking for Hall and Cook. But the weather is expected to get worse sometime on Wednesday, and that could discontinue any search operations. In Hood River, William Lajeunesse, Fox 11 News. The new man at the Pentagon is promising to listen to the troops and give President Bush honest advice. Robert Gates was sworn in today as defense Hi, secretary, replacing Donald Rumsfeld. Gates says he shares the president's view that losing in Iraq would be, in his words, a calamity. All of us want to find a way to bring America's sons and daughters home again. But as the president has made clear, we simply cannot afford to fail in the Middle East. Gates says he'll travel to Iraq soon to hear from the commanders, in his words, straight from the shoulder. Hours after Gates took office, a grim report from the Pentagon. It says attacks in Iraq, like this car bomb today in Baghdad, have reached their highest level ever. About 1,000 every week aimed at Iraqi and U.S. troops as well as Iraqi civilians. The violence is so bad, the Pentagon says that ordinary Iraqis have lost confidence in their own future. Nuclear arms talks are back on between the United States and North Korea. The U.S. says it will normalize relations with North Korea if that country abandons its nuclear weapons program. North Korea, though, is demanding that all sanctions from the United Nations and the United States are lifted before it disarms. U.S. Envoy Christopher Hill says patience is wearing thin. The supply of our patients may have exceeded the international demand for that patience and that uh, we should be a little less patient and pick up the pace and work a little fast, uh, faster. North Korea also wants a nuclear reactor to be used for generation of electricity before it abandons its weapons program. In Iran, opponents of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad are claiming early victories in key races for Iran's local elections. Partial results show the candidates in the lead are mostly conservatives, but more moderate than the ones who normally align themselves with the hardline president. The results might indicate a disapproval of Ahmadinejad's tough talk against the U.S., as well as his assertions that Israel should be wiped off the map. 
Word tonight that First Lady Laura Bush had a skin cancer tumor removed from her shin in November. The cancer was identified as squamous cell carcinoma, a malignant tumor that is the second most common form of skin cancer. The tumor was only about the size of a nickel and caught early. The White House said the reason for the belated announcement was that Mrs. Bush wanted it to be a private matter. Terrifying ordeal for a seven-year-old girl. You think it'd be safe, especially during the Christmas holiday. And now? And now it's not safe. A neighborhood worried why they're on the lookout now for this man. The rush is on to mail those Christmas gifts, but the busiest time at the post office can be the most vulnerable, helpful holiday mailing advice. I go down right away because he leaves them where it could be vulnerable. Hello, we're the Baylor family stationed at Aviano Air Base, Italy. We'd like to send our greetings to the Gibson Baylor family living in Paris, California. Hi, we miss you and love you. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays! Love you! Hi, we're the Silvas and we're stationed here on Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan. And we want to say season's greetings to all our friends and family back in California. We miss you! Happy Holidays! Sab and Espanol on Fox 11 News is sponsored by Chevy. The Chevy Red Tag event is on. See your participating Chevy dealer. The ultimate mystery. Why are women infertile? Why can't we make babies anymore? I need your help. Not for me. A girl. She's pregnant. Now you know it's at stake. You need to get her to the coast to pass security checkpoints. So why did you come to me? I trust you. They want your baby. We have to leave. We're almost there, Keith. We're almost there. Children of Man. Rated R. Select theaters Christmas Day. Save 30 to 60% on thousands of gifts. Only at Ross. I got chills, they're multiplying, and I'm losing control. It's the Fox 11 News is brought to you by the new Epson Ultra High Definition Photo Printers. <laughs> Fred Flintstone, Yogi Bear, Tom and Jerry, the Jetsons, Scooby-Doo, they all sprang from the fertile mind and pen of animator Joseph Barbera, one half of the renowned Hanna-Barbera team. Joe Barbera died today at home in Studio City, five years after his partner William Hanna passed away. Starting out more than half a century ago, Hanna-Barbera made history with cartoons that became part of pop culture and still entertained millions around the world. Joe Barbera was 95. A young girl got away from a would-be abductor because she did all the right things. She was walking home in San Clemente from Truman Benedict Elementary School when a man tried to grab her using one of the oldest tricks in the book. Orange County Bureau Chief Al Knipe was live with the lookout for this man. Al. Well, and that suspect hasn't been seen since he struck here on Via Salona Friday afternoon, and that has a lot of parents in this San Clemente neighborhood on edge. Yeah, it was really scary because you don't even think about something like this happening around your neighborhood. A seven-year-old girl walking home from school last Friday afternoon is confronted by a man resembling this sketch asking for help to find his dog. She said no and ran off. Suspect then chased her for a short while, stating, get back here, get back here. The girl kept running until the suspect finally stopped chasing her. She very alertly did the right thing, ran away, went to a place of safety, which was a neighbor's home, and contacted her mother. Aaron Razor and the seven-year-old girl were walking home from nearby Truman Benedict Elementary School. No, I didn't see him. I just went inside my house, and I don't know what happened next. A delivery man spotted the suspect and described him to authorities as being white, about 5'10", heavy set, 40 to 50 years old, with gray hair, wearing a long-sleeved blue t-shirt and shorts, but no shoes. It's very scary. Parents say they normally wouldn't think twice about sending their kids out to play. And you'd think it'd be safe, especially during the Christmas holiday. And now? And now it's not safe. So do you guys know what to do? Yeah. yeah. What do you do? Run away. Run, um, say you don't, no. You don't tell them anything and just take off running. Yeah. The opposite yeah. direction. Yeah. You got to be careful. Yeah. 
and they really need to be careful given the fact that they are on holiday break right now. Parents telling me that they'll be keeping a close eye and a tight rein on those kids with that predator on the loose. Reporting live from San Clemente, I'm Al Naipo, Fox 11 News. A bizarre accident in Palos Verdes Estates overnight. A woman's car went over a cliff from a parking lot at Paseo del Mar, Paseo del Mar, at Palos Verdes Drive, and she survived. Rescuers found her at the base of the cliff, but her story of what happened is very different from what investigators are saying. Hal Eisner joins us live from her home. Hal. John, bizarre, terrifying, amazing. There are lots of words you could use to describe what happened to Heather Kane, but some of the most frightening words are coming tonight from the mother of the 23-year-old. The way Palos Verdes Estates Police tell it, 23-year-old Heather Kane had a seizure, lost control of her SUV, went a couple of hundred feet over the cliff and survived. Anybody that goes off the cliff here usually doesn't, uh, doesn't make it, but this is one of the few times somebody did. I was in shock when I heard where she had had the accident. Kane's mother, Mara, can't believe what happened to her daughter, but says the story is much more frightening and much more dramatic than what the police are saying. My daughter was lost up in PV. She took a wrong turn. She stopped in the cove to uh, press on star to get her directions. And while she was sitting there, she didn't put her brake on. And a truck that was already in the parking lot was leaving back into her, apparently startled her. And she might have put her foot on the gas and went over the edge. As the SUV tumbled down the hill, Kane says her daughter was ejected from the GMC envoy. She stayed there all night in the cold, hanging on to a bush. And in the morning when she could see, she inched her way down the rest of the embankment, walked down into the ocean to get around the rocks. And then when she got to the beach, she yelled for help. And that's when the surfers and another woman came. Surfer Tom Compass hiked down to the crash area, videotaped some of these scenes, was stunned at what he saw. After all, he's seen crashes like this before, but with deadly outcomes. How could anybody get out of that and walk away? I'm glad she's alive. Yeah. <laughs> the guardian angels were looking after her. Not far from where Heather was found, there was a tragic discovery, an unidentified man who did not survive a cliff fall. Investigators are still working on that case. As for Heather Kane, she is in the hospital tonight. She is in fair condition. Her mother tells me that she may have a neck injury. She does seem to have a broken wrist, mostly bruises and cuts. But amazingly, she's in good shape, says her mom. Really good shape. Reporting live from El Segundo, Hal Eisner, Fox 11 News. A house fire killed a woman in Rancho Cucamonga early today. Flames erupted in this two-story house on Kernwood Court. It started just before 5 o'clock this morning. The woman's body was in an upstairs bedroom. A metal security screen on the front door made it tough for firefighters to get into the house. Closing arguments began today in the trial of a man charged in the murders of auto racing legend Mickey Thompson and his wife. Prosecutors charged that Thompson's former business partner, Michael Goodwin, had the couple killed after a business dispute did not go his way. Goodwin's defense attorney said there is no evidence connecting him to the murders. No killers, no plan, no meeting, no weapon, no phone calls, no payout, nothing. Closing arguments will continue tomorrow at the Pasadena Courthouse. They lost their lives working to save others. Three air ambulance crew members died when their chopper crashed in the Cajon Pass last week. Today, their friends and families said goodbye. Hundreds of rescue workers and firefighters from all over Southern California poured into the High Desert Church in Victorville to honor the three killed in the crash. Pilot Paul Latour, flight nurse Katrina Kish, and paramedic Jerry Miller. They all died when their Mercy Air helicopter slammed into the side of a hill as they were returning to base. Latour's sister Sharon praised him as a hero. Paul's life is a living reminder of the hero inside each of us. Many of those who worked with the three talked about their caring and dedication to helping the injured. Gloria Huerta has known Katrina Kish since she became a nurse. She cared about her patients. I remember how stubborn she was and how she would stand her ground for quality patient care. Paramedic Jerry Miller was the prankster of the group. He drove us nuts sometimes, but we're family, and that's what families do. I would just like to say to Paul, Jerry, and Katrina, who have completed their final mission, welcome home. <laughs> Sounding the final tones for Paul Latour, Katrina Kish, 
and Gary Miller. May God rest their souls. Federal investigators hope to have a preliminary report on the crash this week. A true community effort came together today to help the families of the five firefighters killed in the Esperanza fire. A big check and the amount of more than $58,000 was given to the U.S. Forestry Service to help the firefighters' families. San Bernardino City firefighters held a boot drive with, uh, along with Public Safety Academy and Costco to raise that money. 13-year-old Tina Guerrera also helped collect money in her neighborhood. The five firefighters died in the October arson fire. If you're tired of all the heavy traffic when you shop, help us on the way. L.A. Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa unveiled a holiday shopper traffic initiative this morning. Traffic officers will be deployed to 55 of the city's most congested intersections. The mayor hopes this will relieve the heavy traffic around some of the city's busier shopping malls. Postal employees are gearing up for Wednesday. That's the busiest mail day of the year. Turns out some bad guys are taking advantage. Christina Gonzalez has more on holiday mail theft. Christina. Which are a problem at this time of the year. But before I get into that, I need to let you know that if you want things to get there by Christmas, you got to use priority mail from now through Wednesday, express mail through Friday. With that said, take a look. Uh -huh. Gifts for family, uh -huh. cards for friends, and last-minute letters to Santa. You know it's Christmas when the line at the post office gets this long and people are still so, smiling. Considering it's a week before Christmas, I'm prepared to wait in line. <laughs> How do you sleep on the package? <laughs> Show me the technique. Uh. I knew it was going to take a long time. So you brought the newspaper? Yes. Our busiest day, uh, but here in the uh, L.A. area, 60 million pieces in L.A. Nationwide, 900 million pieces today. The busiest time for the post office can be the most vulnerable time for customers. Why many are here. Because I had a bad experience one uh, Christmas, you know. How That's why he doesn't leave uh, bill payments in his mailbox. And those packages sitting in porches? Well, I am a little careful with the packages, though. I try and check my door more when I get yeah. the mail. Uh, make sure that I have a return receipt. And of course, if you have toys with batteries, take those batteries out. Seems Santa has helpers at the post office, even for the last Saint minute Lewis, Christmas cards. Riverside, Anaheim, and Hawthorne. And even the elf has to be in line to do it. Santa's in the car. Commands. <laughs> I, I gotta do it. Now, if you want to find out which post offices are open late this week, give them a call at the 1-800-ASK-USPS line. That's 275-8777. We do have that number on our website, myfoxla.com. This post office over here open until 11 p.m. through this week. Live in Westchester, I'm Christina Gonzalez, Fox 11 News. Kids, send a letter to Santa and get a personal reply. I'm happy. The big man comes knocking and brings Christmas to kids who need it the most. Skiers arrive at Mountain High in force. The excuses they recommend to get you out of work and on the slopes. Boss man, I'm sorry, man. I, I can't make it in today. I'm really not feeling good. My stomach hurts. My head hurts. Want to know more? Go to MyFoxLA.com. We're there 24-7. Critics everywhere can't stop cheering. Been waiting for this all year. Our season's best savings on many of your favorite Toyotas. It's Toyota Fawn, and it's only at your Toyota dealer. Now get $500 factory cash back on a new fun to drive 07 Corolla. There are even great deals and low leases on the incredible new 07 Camry. Just name Motor Trend's 2007 Car of the Year. See your Toyota dealer today. Toyota Fawn ends soon. Hurry, time is running out. Got it. The Beats had some cataracts. The sheep don't like it. Lock the cash box. Is he Lock. saying stop the cat box? Stop the cat box. You don't have to understand your music to understand how to get it all from your PC to your phone. Only Singular lets you take ripped, purchased, and even subscription music on the new Singular Sync. Only $49.99. Singular, raising the bar.
23 years of marriage, and you walk in on Dan with another woman? The ultimate betrayal. I said I was going to stop the affair, and I couldn't stop. A relationship in ruins. I'm so insecure. I don't trust him at all anymore. I still love Laura. I do want to make my marriage work. Is this the end or the chance for a new beginning? That's my big question. Do you want to win back her love and sweep her off her feet? All new Dr. Keith Adlow. Tomorrow at 1 on Fox 11. Check out the great offers on America's undisputed leader, Ford F-Series, during Ford's year-end event. Let's get it started. F-150 offers a luxurious car-like interior built on the strongest frame in its class. Maybe that's why there are more F-Series on the road with 250,000 miles than any other brand. Get it started in a truck that's built Ford tough. Let's get it started. Now, for a limited time, lease a Ford F-150 Super Crew Let's for $2.99 a month during Ford's year-end event. Fox 11 News is sponsored by your Southern California Ford dealers. Not just miles per gallon, more fun per gallon. More gunfire has broken out between rival Palestinian forces in Gaza, this time in front of the presidential compound. It's the latest round in a week of street battles. Earlier in the day, one person was killed when shooting erupted at a hospital. Gunmen from the Fatah party, who support President Mahmoud Abbas, are battling Hamas fighters for control of Gaza. The battles began when Abbas called for early elections. Hamas believes that's an attempt to undermine the victory it achieved at the polls last January. Spacewalk number four got the job done at last. Copy that. Welcome to EVA 4, my friend. Astronauts from the Space Shuttle Discovery finally managed to fold up a stubborn solar wing on the International Space Station. For days, they tried unsuccessfully to close it by remote control. The old panel is being moved to make way for a new one. In Massachusetts, an emotional day in court for the father of a young woman attacked in her home. 22-year-old Derek Allen is accused of terrorizing a woman, taking her hostage at knife point in her bedroom while her baby was sleeping nearby. She would called 911 when she heard glass breaking downstairs. Here's what happened in court. Unit, you gotta get in there. You got her, unit. In court today, when the woman's father, 50-year-old Clifford Maraglia, heard that 911 tape of his daughter screaming, he went after the suspect. All I could hear was the tapes that you guys had before with her screaming. And what can I tell you? I lost it. You know, you're supposed to be there to protect your kids, right? And I wasn't. Court officers broke up the brawl. Maraglia's daughter and grandchild were not harmed in the home invasion. The latest FBI figures on crime show a disturbing trend. For the second year in a row, crime is up across the country. That's after a decade of declines. Violent crime rose 3.7% in the first half of this year. Murders were up 1.4%. Robberies jumped almost 10%. Even arson climbed substantially, 6.8%. The big question is why, and there's no clear answer yet. One possibility, demographics. Most typical criminals are in their teens to early 20s, and that population, kids of the baby boomers, is growing. A new study finds that, get this, marijuana is the top cash crop in the United States. Nationwide, more than $35 billion worth of marijuana was produced in the past year. And California is the top pot-producing state with nearly $14 billion. The value of California's marijuana crop exceeds the combined value of national production of wheat and cotton. Another new study says that cutting fat from their diet may help prevent breast cancer in older women. Researchers studied more than 2,400 postmenopausal women with early breast cancer. The rate of the disease recurring after five years is almost 10% for women who ate a low-fat diet and almost 12.5% for women who ate a standard diet. However, there was little benefit for women whose breast cancer is fueled by hormones. Ever wonder what happens to those letters addressed to the North Pole? As some needy local families found out this morning, sometimes a knock on the door means Santa has come to answer them in person. Instead of Rudolph and LAPD black and white, instead of a sleigh, a converted Coca-Cola truck, a special motorcade riding through the streets of Pacoima, answering wishes spelled out in letters to Santa. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> the Valadez home, one of Santa's first stops. 15-year-old Juanita explains why she wrote, though both parents work. Last year, it was, we didn't really have a Christmas. It was just 
no presents, nothing. She didn't want her family to be disappointed again. Especially my little sister. Like, I did it more for her and my brother. Just three years old, even little Ruby understood the significance of today's special visit. It's amazing. Oh, my God. We're so happy right now. At the Santa Clarita Postal Station. I'm still getting about three to 500 letters a day for Santa Claus. Far more than Santa can answer, but with help from the LAPD, Coca-Cola, Walmart, and Best Buy, at least a few local families now getting the Christmas of their dreams. Brought you some gifts. Okay. Okay. That's good, huh? Third grader Stephanie Tafoya wrote, Please don't forget to stop my house. Stop my house. This Christmas, I would love to have a bike so I can have it to ride around the park. I've never had a bike before. So will you have your bike? I'm happy because everybody came to visit me at Santa, and I'm happy because they bring me some presents. A bike. Kids love that. Most kids requested more presents for their parents and siblings than they did for themselves. Santa granted those wishes, too. The Postal Service tells us with more volunteers, he could make more dreams come true. If you want to help out, go to our website, myfoxla.com. For the 41st year in a row, the Ruth Moore Christmas Party was held for about 2,000 inner-city kids. The Big Bash was held at Fremont High School in South L.A. The kids got lunch and 21-inch stockings filled with all kinds of goodies. And they were entertained with a day of music and magic. Cold weather rolling through Southern California has made skiers a happy bunch. The diehards at Mountain High just finished their final run tonight. Susan here, Susan is among them, but not necessarily one of them. Susan, you're not a skier? I am a skier, but not a diehard skier, Christine. I got to tell you the truth. I did strap on the skis, but once we finished all our interviews, I thought about a run and thought, I am just too cold. So I wussed out. I do not qualify as a diehard skier. Let me tell you about Mountain High. They just finished a $2 million renovation. And take a look. They got new ticket gates. They moved one of the chairlifts, so there's more room for people to mill about. But let's admit it. That's not really why people come up here. It's all about the snow. That's not snow falling, that's state-of-the-art snow making. And we can now make 30% more snow using the exact same, same system and the exact same amount of energy. So we can make a lot more snow, put a lot more snow down on the ground a lot quicker, and that's helping us open this, this terrain right now. Three times more terrain than the same time last year. And the conditions? You know what, it's a little bit icy right now, but since there has been some uh, rain and some snowfall, it's not too bad. And uh, it, all in all, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good, but really cold. I can't feel my toes. Doesn't matter for those who got a ride, always with a good excuse at the ready to come up the mountain. Boss, man, I'm sorry, man. I, your wife's in the hospital, and really, she's at work, and you're going to go snowboarding. I can't make it in today. I'm really not feeling good. Broken bell is what I, I just used, but it was, that was actually true. My stomach hurts. My head hurts. I threw up all night. Your grandma's dying, but really, she just gave you money to go to get a lift ticket. Oh, man, I just can't make it in. Yeah. And then what happens later? And later, I'm up here. Up here with the likes of Caitlin Ellswick, who shouldn't be up here. I have a broken arm. How'd you break the arm? Snowboarding. <laughs> I can't do that. So what, you're still boarding, but you got the broken arm. Yeah. What does your doctor say about that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> but with snow like this, either real or man-made, you gotta ride, gotta ski, gotta get here. <laughs> Okay, that's my new best friend, Corey, with a K. And if you want to be just like Corey and come up here as often as you can, Mountain High is open seven days a week until 10 o'clock at night. And on Friday, they open East Resort just in time for the holidays. Reporting live on Mountain High, I'm Susan Hirasuna, Fox 11 News. All right, Maria, and for Mark tonight, Mark's actually under the weather a little bit. And yes, he is. You feel about as cold in here as, as she does out there, don't you? I, I just get cold really quickly. I was complaining about how cold it was last week, and I got a few emails saying, hey, it's not that cold. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's L.A. Today, I can really say that, right? I probably won't get any emails. Tonight, it is cold. We're talking about frost advisories as well as freeze watches that are in effect. A quick look at uh, some video we captured earlier today of some snow up in the San Gabriels. Check it out. It is just beautiful. Isn't it? We've got the white-capped mountains, and we've had mostly clear skies, so we've been able to see uh, just the gorgeous mountains, blue skies, and it will continue for the next several days. We're actually looking at high pressure to dominate our weather. However, 
I will say that it is going to be quite cold, particularly cold in the early morning hours. And here's why. We had that storm system that dropped from the Gulf of Alaska, brought in all this cold air. The jet stream is still pulled way south to uh, the southwest. That's still allowing all that cold air to move down uh, over Southern California. And most of the showers now off to our east. We do have the wind coming out of the north, so that's why it's feeling quite extra cold. It was chilly today. The daytime highs remained below the average. It was only 62 downtown. The average temperature 68. It was only 56 in Burbank today, 57 in Woodland Hills, and uh, 55 degrees in Riverside. I mentioned that storm system. We got a little bit from it. Nearly two tenths of an inch of rain. We're still below the average and still uh, far from where we were last year. So uh, we're relatively still quite dry. We're looking at the counterclockwise circulation of that low pressure now to our east. And you can see behind the system, mostly clear skies and the clouds still moving out of the north. These are cold clouds that are moving in. Frost advisory in effect for those wind sheltered areas, the interior valleys, uh, the Inland Empire, lower deserts. We're talking temperatures in the 20, near 28 to 32 degrees. This advisory in effect until 9 a.m. actually tomorrow morning. And then we're looking at a freeze watch. I think it's going to be even colder Tuesday night into Wednesday morning as we look for temperatures to dip below 28 degrees. So yes, indeed, very cold numbers over the next several mornings. And here's what's going on. We've had clear skies, so what little heat we get in the day actually radiates up in the atmosphere very quickly. And we've had long nights, so clear, cold overnight temperatures expected for the rest, well, for at least for the next couple of days and really for the rest of the week into Christmas. We're looking at an overnight low. Look at that, 44 at the beach, 37 for the Valley Inland Empire, 33 on Wednesday morning. So we got that freeze watch in effect. A few clouds uh, move in for uh, Thursday, Friday, a chance for drizzle as we look ahead to Friday morning. But I think the weekend and looking well ahead to Christmas morning, I think it will be dry, a little chilly, but no rain in the uh, short term and, and long term forecast. Yeah. Okay. I'm Good. with you. I'm always cold. I this mean, is cold for LA. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. <laughs> See ya. He jumps through hoops for a living, but this time it almost took his life. The misstep that put this stuntman in the hospital. I'm Rick Garcia. Wait till you hear what Terrell Owens' mouth cost him this time. Plus, the judge has handed down the sentencing in this wild brawl from the weekend, and boy, is it expensive. The Dow falls just shy of reaching another record close. The blue chips down about four points. The Nasdaq falling 21. Oracle posting quarterly profits that met Wall Street expectations after the bell on Monday. Earnings rose 21 percent on strong sales. And a battle royale is brewing in the benefit management industry. Shares of Caremark shooting up 10 percent after Express Scripts launched a hostile bid worth $26 billion, possibly derailing a previous deal with CVS. And a private equity group is on a big buying binge. Apollo management in a joint deal to buy Harris Entertainment for $17 billion. ED is also shelling out another $6.6 .6 billion for the parent of Century 21 and Caldwell Banker. The government going after three former Fannie Mae executives. A civil suit seeks $215 million in bonuses and penalties said to be tied to faulty accounting. And Justin Timberlake is looking for a singing partner. He is teaming up with CBS and Yahoo to find one fan to perform with him at the Grammys. That's business. I'm Neil Cavuto. From acclaimed director Stephen Frears. Diana has died in Paris. Comes a story of our times. A new member of the royal family will speak publicly about this. Our leaders. Your actions have damaged the monarchy. Ourselves. Something's happened. There's been a shift in values. Director Stephen Frears does a superb job. A crowning achievement. And now a Golden Globe nominee for Best Picture of the Year. The Queen. Rated PG-13. Now playing. Do things right the first time. For all the help you need from start to finish. Step one, Osh. The holidays are here. With a new HDTV in your home this season, you'll need high-definition service from Time Warner Cable for the clear picture and superior sound quality you expect. It's free for digital cable customers. Get many of your favorite shows, movies, and sports in high definition on your local ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC channels. With no extra equipment to buy, installation is easy and hassle-free. 
It doesn't matter if you've been naughty or nice. Our gift to you lasts the whole year through. Discover HD service from Time Warner Cable and discover the power of you. Are you like me? I have high blood pressure and I have high cholesterol. Sometimes problems come in twos, but sometimes help can come in one. Cataway. Cataway contains the leading branded blood pressure medicine, Norvas, and Lipitor, the leading branded cholesterol medicine, combined in one pill, Cataway. Cataway is one of many treatment options that I discuss with my doctor. Ask your doctor if Cataway is right for you. Along with diet and exercise, one pill doing two jobs for me. My doctor said Cataway is not for everyone. It's not for people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. To check for liver problems, you need simple blood tests. Tell your doctor about any heart problems and all other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. For blood pressure and cholesterol-lowering benefits, it's Cataway. One pill, two medicines. Make sense to you? Makes sense to me. One pill, two medicines. Ask your doctor if Cataway is right for you. Are you asking me to spy? I'm asking you to be a good citizen. The Good Shepherd is the godfather of CIA movies. David Anson of Newsweek calls it mesmerizing and spellbinding. And Larry King raves, it's the best spy movie ever made. Matt Damon is phenomenal. Angelina Jolie is remarkable. And Robert De Niro is as good a director as he is an actor. The CIA. The nasty little secrets. The Good Shepherd, rated R, starts Friday. Tis the season for happy Honda days. And what better way to celebrate than to save on your favorite Honda? Like the best overall value Accord, the rugged Ridgeline, the fuel-efficient eight-passenger Pilot. They're all just waiting for you at your Honda dealer. A brand new Honda will definitely put you in the holiday spirit. Happy Honda days. Lease a Honda Accord for $199 a month for well-qualified customers. Come to Santa Anita Tuesday, the day after Christmas, and join the opening day excitement. Geraldo at Large. Exclusive interviews. Hard-hitting investigation. News with passion. Geraldo at Large. Weeknights at 11 on Fox 11. A new Guinness World Record has been set for bungee jumping. New Zealander A.J. Hackett, called the father of bungee jumping, nailed the record by jumping off the 764-foot Macau Tower in China. Total jump was more than 600 feet, breaking the record by 62 feet. Okay, Chinese you. officials hope the stunt brings see tourists to the see down. the tower. <laughs> Another stunt did not go as well. Hollywood stuntman Zabruski Aldrich was performing a tricky stunt in Shanghai where he was supposed to jump through rings of fire from the top of moving cars. The stunt went fire, fine until he got to the last fire ring and stumbled. Aldrich bounced off the car and landed on his head, leaving him in critical condition. It is a week until Christmas now, but it's already been a wonderful holiday for hundreds of underprivileged children thanks to Toys for Tots. Rick Lozano joined with the U.S. Marine Corps today, taking those youngsters on a Christmas shopping spree. Thank you, Toys for Tots! And the U.S. Marines! A line stretching almost to the North Pole. Over a thousand youngsters waiting anxiously for their chance to pick out and purchase their own Christmas toys. A festive holiday season atmosphere greeted them at the Ontario Toys R Us. But down each aisle is where festive became downright joyful. A gift certificate for each child worth $40 meant Christmas came early to these underprivileged children and their families. Merry Christmas! Did you get everything you wanted uh, here today? Yes. Did you want to say so hi to somebody back at the station? My grandma and grandpa Lisette. All right. Children understand toys. Parents understand and appreciate the smiles those toys bring. All the great stuff that my kids wanted for Christmas that I wasn't able to buy, you guys helped me get it, and I thank God for it. Sponsors donated over $100,000 to this year's Toys for Tots campaign. Half of it spent in one merry morning of shopping. Our Toys for Tots campaign will come to an end tomorrow with another shopping spree. This one at the Toys R Us in Glendale. It's by invitation only, but it's an invitation that is likely to put smiles on hundreds of faces. In Ontario, Rick Lozano, Fox 11 News. Well, if you uh, saw the big uh, fight in the NBA uh, a couple yeah. of days ago, you uh, knew it was going to be expensive. Yeah, and it's time to do the time. The weekend was an expensive one for the New York Knicks and Denver Nuggets. 
Seven players have been suspended, including Denver's Carmelo Anthony, the NBA's leading scorer, who will have to sit out 15 games for throwing a sucker punch during that ugly brawl. It comes at a cost of $641,000 in salary to Carmelo. It is also the sixth longest suspension in NBA history. Both teams were fined $500,000 each. Neither coach was punished, but both blamed the other for the melee. In fact, Denver's coach Car George Carl had some harsh words for New York's Isaiah Thomas. I'm watching Utah blow a 12-point lead to Sacramento two nights before that with four minutes to go in the game, and you're telling me that I'm running the score up? He's full of <laughs> He's a total <laughs> and he should be held accountable for what his actions are. Well, that uh, stuff that comes out of Terrell Owens' mouth has got T.O. in trouble again, except this time it wasn't words. He spit in the face of D'Angelo Hall on Saturday night, and even though he has apologized, today the NFL fined T.O. $35,000. Big blue hair, big blue glasses. Take one guess who this guy roots for. The Indianapolis Colts. Indy hosting Cincinnati third quarter. 17-13 Colts. Peyton Manning to old reliable Marvin Harrison. That's their third touchdown of the night. Manning finishes with four total. And the Colts win 34-16. to Former NFL quarterback Jim Harbaugh is now the new coach at Stanford University. The Cardinal just went through their worst season ever, going 1-11, which was a school record for losses. Harbaugh spent the last three years as head coach at the University of San Diego. Some sad news tonight. Former Dodgers pitcher Larry Sherry has died after a long battle with cancer. Sherry was the MVP of the 1959 World Series. He went 2-0 with two saves in helping the Dodgers beat the White Sox. Sherry was 71. And a special tribute tonight before the Ducks game as the team was presented with an American flag flown in from Iraq. The Ducks hosting Calgary. 2-1 Ducks. Dustin Penner on the move. He shoots. He scores. The Ducks win 4-1. They lead the league with 58 points. Perhaps it's, it's time we stop calling them Southern California's best-kept secret. 30 seconds left to go on the power play. Shot scored by Stellani right off the pass. And we're not sneaking into any buildings, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's an 82-game schedule, and we've had some success here early in the season. Success comes as no surprise to this team. After all, they are coming off their best year in franchise history. Well, obviously, the new ownership, the new management, the coach, everybody, like, we really wanted to raise the bar higher and higher. We're on a roll right now, and it's just something special. And, uh, you know, every, every day I kind of got to give myself a little pinch to realize that, it's, that I'm here and uh, to be a part of something this special. And hopefully we continue to uh, get better. Alone in front, Tabu scores! And what about the team's sudden popularity? It's been great, you know. Uh, people uh, around the, you know, Orange County are are talking more and more about the Ducks. I'm not one to to like to be recognized, but it's you know more and more I go you know to the store and I think people know who I am. He goes outside on Jovanovski, cuts back, dropped it off. They score. But one question remains: with the likes of the Dodgers, Angels, the Lakers, even USC. Are the Red Hot Ducks the best team in Los Angeles? I'm going to have to say the Ducks are. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, I'm not a USC fan, so I'm going to have to say the Ducks are the best team in L.A. right now. <laughs> hey, you know, that this is a team that's winning and by a lot. So yeah. see if yeah. they can do it all the way to the end now. They're on fire. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Right. Thanks, Ray. It's usually Santa's job to decide if you've been naughty or nice. Why these men in red leave that decision to a judge. Here are the numbers in tonight's Fantasy Five drawing. There are 7, 8, 13, 31, and 32. Today's midday daily three numbers, 0, 3, 2. The evening daily three, 2, 2, 1. And the results of tonight's Daily Derby. Very superstitious. 25 years ago, he left her for another woman. Now, it's time for a little payback. He has got to lose it all. This housewife <laughs> isn't desperate, she's deadly. Revenge is a dish best served crazy. <laughs> Tatum O'Neill stars in Wicked Wicked Games. Weeknights at 8 on Channel 13. They're powerful, they're ready to play. Discover the new face of Audi.
At the new face of Audi event, you'll find exceptional year-end values on select Audi models. Visit your Audi dealer today. Here's your paper. Thanks. Here's a little something for you. Wow, thank you. You said that's something. Thank you. Season to wow everyone on or not on your list. That's why our pledge is to help you find the gifts everyone really wants. Not sure what to get? With the Best Buy gift card, you can't go wrong. Wrap up the wow only at Best Buy. And Ferguson on the 17th. Oh, that's trouble. Nothing is lost with the full HD 1080p Aquas from the leading innovator of liquid crystal television, Sharp. 23 years of marriage, and you walk in on Dan with another woman? The ultimate betrayal. I said I was going to stop the affair, and I couldn't stop. A relationship in ruins. I'm so insecure. I don't trust him at all anymore. I still love Laura. I do want to make my marriage work. Is this the end or the chance for a new beginning? That's my big question. Do you want to win back her love and sweep her off her feet? All new Dr. Keith Ablo. Tomorrow at 1 on Fox 11. Outlander. Out everything. Everything. I was walking down the street. That's so powerful. Right now, over half our suits and sport coats are on sale. Plus hundreds of pants, sweaters, shoes, shirts, and outerwear. 20 to 50% off. Now that's a sale. I guarantee it. Open New Year's Day. In two days, see the film critics are calling a total triumph. You tell them over till it's over. There's nothing more to prove, Pop. I gotta go out the way I gotta go. Rocky Balboa, rated PG, this Wednesday. Fox 11 News is presented by Rocky Balboa. In theaters everywhere, December 20th. Don't miss the shock of the season on a two-hour event. Oh, God. Tomorrow at 8 on Fox 11. Better watch out. Better not break the law because Santa cops will catch you. These Filipino policemen dressed as St. Nick are working undercover in shopping malls. They're trying to catch unsuspecting criminals in the act like pickpocketers. Many officers are doing this on their own time, but not everybody makes the cut. Candidates have to be tall, uh, tall that is, and they have to be a little bit chubby. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, rules, rules, are rules, fit, after all. Fit the mold there. Exactly. <laughs> all right, tomorrow on Good Day LA from the movie Little Miss Sunshine, Alan Arkin and Abigail Breslin. That's tomorrow morning at 7, following the Fox 11 Morning News. Coming up next, Geraldo at Live. Good night. Why is Good Day LA number one? There is a whole reason for all this. Great guests, sharp crew. Okay. We're not sure, but here's what we do know. More people watch Good Day LA than Good Morning America. And more people watch us instead of the Today Show. Good Day LA, LA's most watched morning show. Good Day LA, number one in LA. More studios.